Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on ST elevation myocardial infarction. Myocardial infarction occurs due to total occlusion of the coronary artery, and the impaired blood supply results in necrosis of heart muscle. The clinical diagnosis is based on chest pain, elevated cardiac biomarkers, and ECG changes, such as ST elevation that meets the certain criteria, and signs of new left bundle branch block. For history taking, patient will complain of chest pain. The characteristics are retrosternal pain, lasting more than 30 minutes, severe crushing or pressing in nature, associated with profuse sweating, nausea and vomiting, shortness of breath, and radiation of pain to left arm or jaw. Some atypical symptoms are weakness, lightheadedness with syncope, and dizziness. Ask whether there is any history of ischemic heart disease, percutaneous coronary intervention, or CABG surgery done. Ask for risk factors for atherosclerosis such as diet and exercise, or cholesterol level. Any previous episodes of transient ischemic attack or cerebrovascular accident. Symptoms of peripheral vascular disease. Family history of cardiac events. And social history. Focusing on smoking, alcohol, occupation, and also ask allergic history. Next, proceed with physical examination. Check their general consciousness and GCS score. Any signs of heart failure? Anemic signs? hydration status, vitals on arrival, check lungs for crepitations, cardiovascular examination for normal heart sounds or any murmur, examine the abdomen for any hepatosplenomegaly, or ascites, check legs for pedal edema as well. For investigations, do ECG to look for ST elevation, and new LBBB. Cardiac enzymes such as troponin T, CK, CKMB, LDH, and AST chest x-ray should be done to rule out other causes of chest pain, such as pneumothorax, aortic dissection, or any fluid overload to suggest heart failure. The management goals are to relieve pain, early reperfusion, and treat complications. ECG monitoring. Antiplatelets like aspirin and clopidogrel. Statin if indicated. Analgesia such as morphine, sedation, and oxygen. Also assess for reperfusion strategy, which is either fibrinolytic therapy, or PCI. For fibrinolytic therapy, door-to-needle time is 30 minutes. For PCI, door-to-balloon time is 90 minutes. The choice depends on the time from onset of symptoms. If symptoms were present within 3 hours, both are effective. PCI preferred if there are contraindications to fibrinolytic therapy. If between 3 to 12 hours, PCI is preferred. If need to transfer to another hospital, within 2 hours. If not, give fibrinolytic therapy. If it has been more than 12 hours, provided patient is still alive, PCI is recommended. For fibrinolytic therapy, we can give IV streptokinase, altaplase, or tenecteplase. If fibrinolysis failed, where there is persistent chest pain, ST elevation, and hemodynamic instability, arrange for rescue PCI. These are the indicators of successful reperfusion. Resolution of chest pain. Return of ST elevation to isoline or decrease by 50% within 60 to 90 minutes. Early peaking CK or CKMB levels. Restoration of hemodynamic and electrical stability. Percutaneous coronary intervention can be done by inserting intraaortic balloon pump. Another modality is to do coronary artery bypass graft surgery. After the patient is stabilized, send to cardiac care unit. Monitoring inadequate sedation. Prevent Valsalva maneuver by giving lactulose if patient having constipation. Continuous ECG monitoring. Oxygen. And medications are given. Rehabilitation care includes smoking cessation, diet modification, exercise, and control comorbidities. For follow-up. Target BP less than 130 LDL less than 2.6, and fasting blood sugar 6.0, HbA1c below 6.5%. That's all for this video. Thank you.